I point out that a hole in the universe or in a simple container. In the late 1960s, the brilliant Gene Roddenberry introduced the groundbreaking Star Trek television series to the public. This classic sci-fi show overcame various obstacles, including shifting concepts, limited funds, and new team members, while offering intelligent and engaging storylines. As the charismatic captain of the USS Enterprise, William Shatner led the talented cast through both triumphs and challenges. Together, they navigated the complexities of production, growing closer with each passing day. Undoubtedly, the enduring legacy of Star Trek can be attributed to its compelling narratives and the dedication of its exceptional crew. The groundbreaking television series, Star Trek faced several controversies during its production in 1966. These issues range from minor disagreements to more serious allegations of discrimination. The cast, crew, and even the creator were involved in these disputes. Some conflicts stemmed from miscommunications and petty arguments, while others reflected deeper problems related to sexism and bigotry. Interestingly, due to the show's limited budget, producers sought unconventional methods to cut costs. To acquire costumes, they chose to circumvent traditional Hollywood procedures by having outfits manufactured in a sweatshop overnight. Smuggling the freshly sewn garments through a back window became part of the procurement process. This clandestine operation highlights the financial constraints under which the program operated and serves as an example of the lengths to which creators would go to produce quality content despite fiscal limitations. In creating the iconic television series Star Trek, Gene Roddenberry made a notable decision regarding the cast. Initially, he introduced a female character named Number One, who exhibited a logical and emotionally detached personality. However, Roddenberry ultimately opted to keep the Vulcan character, Spock, and bestowed upon him these same traits originally portrayed by Number One. This choice significantly impacted the dynamic of the crew aboard the USS Enterprise. The development of Star Trek was fraught with various challenges and controversies throughout its existence. Among them were subtle references to contemporary issues like the ongoing Vietnam War, which managed to slip past network censors despite their strict guidelines during that era. These underlying commentaries contributed to the rich tapestry woven into the fabric of the series, making it appealing and thought-provoking for audiences. As production continued, tensions sometimes escalated between Roddenberry and executives due to disagreements concerning storylines and content. Despite objections, Roddenberry persisted in incorporating his vision into the show, leaving behind a captivating legacy that continues to resonate even today. Throughout its run, Star Trek tackled complex themes while providing viewers with engaging narratives set against the backdrop of space exploration. With each episode, the audience stepped into a fascinating universe filled with intriguing characters and gripping tales, forever etching itself into the annals of TV history. Even now, many years after its initial air date, fans continue to cherish this classic and appreciate the indelible mark it has left on popular culture. Chaplain. Doctor, there is more of an enemy entwined all through his body. Listen, Chaplain, if you cannot assist me, it's required. In the creation of the iconic 1966 TV series Star Trek, William Shatner, who played the lead role of Captain Kirk, made some notable requests. He asked for a bigger font size for his name in the opening credits and more lines in the script. This reduction in dialogue for other characters was granted, making Shatner's presence more prominent in the series. The writing process for Star Trek was fraught with challenges. Many professional writers struggled to understand the complexities of science fiction required for the show. As a result, creator Gene Roddenberry had to look beyond traditional sources for scripts. He turned to writers from science fiction magazines and even enlisted help from office staff members to ensure the content met the standards he envisioned for this classic series. Gene Roddenberry, the creator of the iconic 1966 TV series Star Trek, had a reputation for meticulously revising scripts to align with his vision. This often led to the removal of concepts that he found disagreeable. One notable example can be seen in the episode The Enemy Within, where a controversial scene featuring an antagonistic version of Captain Kirk confronting Janice Rand about her feelings was criticized for being out of character and tactless. Harlan Ellison, one of the screenwriters who worked on the show, was so disappointed with Roddenberry's alterations to his original script 
that he requested a pseudonym to be used in the credits. Despite these challenges, the show gained popularity over time and has since become a beloved classic among sci-fi enthusiasts. It is worth noting that while Roddenberry's heavy hand in revising scripts caused frustration for some writers, it ultimately helped shape the show into what it became. However, the criticism surrounding the treatment of certain characters, particularly female ones, cannot be ignored. For instance, the way Janice Rand was portrayed in The Enemy Within raised questions about sensitivity and authenticity in character development. Nevertheless, the impact of Star Trek extends far beyond its initial air date, inspiring countless other works in the genre and leaving a lasting legacy in popular culture. However, the production of the show was not just about groundbreaking storytelling and special effects. It was also marked by personal relationships and struggles behind the scenes. Gene Roddenberry, the creator of the series, had affairs with cast members Majel Barrett and Nichelle Nichols during the show's run. His relationship with Barrett, who played Nurse Chapel, developed into a deeper bond that led to their marriage after Roddenberry divorced his first wife. This connection added a layer of complexity to the dynamics on set, as their personal lives intertwined with the production. Meanwhile, Leonard Nimoy, who portrayed Spock, faced his own challenges. The intense public scrutiny weighed heavily on him, leading to difficulties with alcohol. Despite these personal battles, Nimoy maintained a strong sense of professionalism while on set. He committed himself to his role, often pushing through the struggles that came with fame. His ability to deliver a powerful performance in the face of adversity endeared him to fans and colleagues alike, even as he navigated the pressures of his public persona. Or Captain. Bring it to the briefing room. Are you ready, gentlemen? <laughs> In the creation of the iconic TV series Star Trek, composer Alexander Courage made a significant agreement with producer Gene Roddenberry. Courage allowed Roddenberry to share in the royalties for the show's memorable theme music, even though Roddenberry contributed unsuitable lyrics. This decision led to Roddenberry receiving half of the royalties, despite his limited involvement in the musical aspect of the show. The network behind the series, NBC, also played a role in shaping the fate of Star Trek. Despite the show's growing fan base, NBC moved it to a less desirable time slot, which negatively impacted its viewership. Additionally, the network slashed the show's budget, making it difficult for the production team to create high-quality episodes. These actions have fueled speculation among fans and industry professionals alike that NBC may have intentionally tried to sabotage the program. Despite these challenges, Star Trek has left a lasting legacy in the world of television and popular culture. Its themes of exploration, diversity, and cooperation continue to resonate with audiences today, and the show's influence can be seen in numerous spin-offs, films, and other media. Whether through the lens of this classic series or its many successors, the values and ideals presented by Star Trek remain relevant and inspiring to viewers around the globe. Preach. Yes, Captain. For he is. In the creation of the iconic TV series Star Trek, William Shatner, who played Captain Kirk, unfortunately did not attend Leonard Nimoy's funeral, even though they had reconciled prior to Nimoy's passing. This fact might surprise some fans, as the two actors were famously close during the show's run and in later years. Moving on to the origins of Star Trek, it is worth noting that the initial pilot episode, titled The Cage, faced rejection due to its complexity and the presence of a female second-in-command, which led to substantial modifications before the I series entered production. These alterations significantly shaped the direction of the show and set the stage for the adventures we now associate with the crew of the USS Enterprise. Although the cage didn't resonate with network executives, the cast and premise held promise. Consequently, several elements were revised, including recasting Majel Barrett as Nurse Chapel after her portrayal of number one. The original female second-in-command proved divisive among decision-makers. Additionally, the storyline underwent simplification to make it more accessible to broader audiences. These early challenges ultimately contributed to the development of one of television's most cherished classics. Despite the rough start, Star Trek persevered, leaving an indelible mark on both science fiction and popular culture through engaging narratives and memorable character dynamics. For the same reason that I... Listen. He's humanoid. When Star Trek first aired in 1966, it quickly gained a devoted following, 
Although the original series only ran for three seasons, its influence reached far beyond its initial run. The show became a cultural phenomenon, inspiring numerous spin-offs, movies, and even theme park attractions. The show's diverse cast and progressive themes resonated with audiences, addressing topics such as civil rights, women's liberation, and environmentalism before they were widely discussed in mainstream media. This made Star Trek groundbreaking for its time and helped establish science fiction as a genre worthy of serious consideration. Following the success of the original series, several spin-offs emerged, including Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise. These shows continued the adventures of various Starfleet crews, exploring new worlds and encountering new species. In addition to these television series, there have been 13 feature films based on the franchise, with more planned for release in the coming years. Merchandising has also played a significant role in extending Star Trek's reach. From action figures to board games, books to clothing lines, fans can engage with their favorite aspects of the universe outside of traditional viewing experiences. A thriving convention scene has developed around the property, allowing enthusiasts to gather together and celebrate all things Star Trek. Moreover, Star Trek has left an indelible mark on popular culture, influencing countless works of art across multiple mediums. Its distinctive visual style, memorable catchphrases, and iconic characters have become instantly recognizable shorthands for both dedicated followers and casual observers alike. By presenting a hopeful vision of humanity's future, this classic TV series continues to inspire generations of creators, thinkers, and dreamers. As we look forward to what comes next for the storied franchise, it's clear that Star Trek's legacy will continue to shape our collective imagination for many years to come. With each iteration, new viewers discover the joy and wonder of exploration, reminding us all why this timeless tale remains so captivating. Whether through boldly going where no one has gone before, or by simply appreciating the adventure from the comfort of home, Star Trek invites everyone to share in its ongoing journey toward infinite diversity and infinite combinations. Joy to you! Let's travel back to the mid-1960s, when the classic TV series Star Trek was taking shape. Each main character was carefully cast, creating a legendary ensemble. Take Gene Roddenberry, the show's creator, who envisioned a diverse crew aboard the USS Enterprise. He aimed to challenge societal norms by featuring different genders, races, and backgrounds working together harmoniously. This unique approach set the stage for unforgettable casting decisions. At the helm, we find Captain James T. Kirk, played by William Shatner. Initially hired for another part, Shatner impressed the producers during screen tests and eventually landed the leading role. His commanding presence made him perfect for the fearless captain. Next up, Spock. Leonard Nimoy brought logic and wisdom to his portrayal of the half-human, half-Vulcan science officer. Interestingly enough, Nimoy had previously turned down roles in two earlier pilots directed by Roddenberry. Persistence paid off, though, as he finally accepted the iconic role that would define his career. DeForest Kelly joined the cast as Dr. Leonard McCoy, the chief medical officer. Known for his work on Western films, Kelly initially hesitated to join the sci-fi genre. Thankfully, he changed his mind after meeting the rest of the cast and realizing the potential impact of the series. Michelle Nichols took on the groundbreaking role of Uhura, one of the first African-American women to hold a prominent position on television. In fact, Martin Luther King Jr., inspired by her performance, encouraged her to stay on the show despite considering leaving early in its run. James Doohan became Montgomery Scott, the Scottish chief engineer known for exclaiming I can't change the laws of physics. Originally auditioning for various other parts, including Sulu, Duhan demonstrated versatility and adaptability before finding his niche as Scotty. George Teki embodied Mr. Hikaru Sulu, the talented Asian-American navigator. With limited lines and opportunities compared to his fellow actors, Teki still managed to craft a memorable character cherished by fans worldwide. Lastly, Walter Coney completed the primary cast as Pavel Chekhov, the youngest member of the team. Added later in the series due to popularity among teenage viewers, Koenig contributed youthful energy that enriched the dynamic of the group. These actors, assembled through a combination of talent hunts, chance encounters, and persistence, formed the beloved original crew of the Starship Enterprise. Truly a testament to visionary thinking and inclusive storytelling. What happened to them? Nothing happened to the captain. 
Gene Roddenberry, the creator and primary director of Star Trek, had a clear vision for the show. He aimed to create a positive and optimistic view of the future, where diverse races and cultures could work together towards peaceful exploration. This vision was influenced by his own experiences as a World War II pilot and later as a police officer. Roddenberry wanted to explore social issues through the lens of science fiction. To bring his vision to life, Roddenberry employed a unique filming style. He used a documentary-style approach, which gave the show a sense of realism and immediacy. The camera often moved quickly, capturing the action as it happened. This style helped to immerse viewers into the world of Star Trek and made them feel like they were part of the adventure. Collaboration was also key to Roddenberry's success. He worked closely with the cast and crew, encouraging them to contribute their ideas and suggestions. This created a supportive and creative environment where everyone felt invested in the success of the show. One notable collaboration was between Roddenberry and set designer Matt Jefferies. Together, they designed the iconic USS Enterprise, which became synonymous with the show. They drew inspiration from modern aircraft carriers and jet fighters, creating a sleek and futuristic design that captured the imagination of audiences around the world. The casting process was equally collaborative. Roddenberry sought out actors who could bring depth and complexity to their roles. Leonard Nimoy, who played Spock, was initially hesitant about taking the role. However, after meeting with Roddenberry and discussing the character's backstory and motivations, he agreed to take the part. This commitment to character development helped to make Star Trek a beloved and enduring classic. I'm working on a boy. Good. Contact me when you can. Kirk out. Let's journey back to the mid-1960s, where television was on the cusp of something truly groundbreaking. The set of Star Trek, a show that would become iconic, was being constructed piece by painstaking piece. The designers had their work cut out for them. They needed to create a universe unlike anything viewers had ever seen before. They started with the USS Enterprise's bridge, which became both functional and visually stunning. A mix of modern technology and futuristic elements created an unforgettable setting. The show also took advantage of innovative techniques like rear projection and optical effects to simulate space travel and alien worlds. These methods allowed them to tell stories that stretched beyond traditional soundstage limitations. However, these innovations came with their own set of challenges. For instance, combining live action with visual effects often resulted in lengthy shoots and complex post-production processes. Star Trek didn't shy away from ambitious location shooting either. Scenes were filmed in various spots around Southern California, including Vasquez Rocks Natural Area Park, which served as the backdrop for numerous planetary excursions. Navigating these outdoor environments presented unique hurdles related to weather, permits, and coordinating cast and crew schedules. Despite these obstacles, the team persevered, delivering a series that has left an indelible mark on science fiction and popular culture. Its influence can still be felt today, resonating through countless spin-offs, films, and even inspiring real-world scientific advancements. My father will be glad to put you up, though. The musical score and soundtrack of the iconic 1966 TV series Star Trek were crucial in setting the mood and enhancing the show's futuristic setting. Alexander Courage, the primary composer, created a memorable main theme that captured the spirit of exploration and adventure. His innovative approach blended traditional orchestral sounds with electronic elements, resulting in a unique audio experience that captivated audiences. Courage drew inspiration from various sources while crafting his masterpiece. For instance, he incorporated fanfares reminiscent of classical military marches, which paid homage to the show's space opera roots. Simultaneously, he experimented with unusual instruments like the theremin, lending an otherworldly quality to the music. This fusion perfectly encapsulated the blend of human curiosity and technological marvel found throughout the series. Another significant contributor was Gerald Fried, who composed several action cues and dramatic scores during the first season. One notable example is his piece for the episode Amok Time, where he used exotic instrumentation including sitars and drums to underscore Spock's pond far ritual. These choices added depth and cultural richness to the fictional universe depicted on screen. Composers often work closely with producers and directors to tailor their work to specific scenes and storylines. Music became an integral part of shaping each character's personality and advancing plot development. Take, for instance, the love theme developed for Captain Kirk, 
and Edith Keeler in the episode The City on the Edge of Forever. Composer Fred Steiner carefully constructed a tender melody played by strings, evoking feelings of warmth and nostalgia associated with their bittersweet romance. Despite budget constraints and tight production schedules, these talented individuals managed to produce high-quality, engaging music week after week. Their efforts significantly contributed to the lasting legacy of Star Trek, ensuring its place in television history. To this day, listeners continue to appreciate the artistry behind the original series score, proving its timeless appeal and influence over generations of viewers and musicians alike. One of the most iconic scenes in the 1966 TV series Star Trek is undoubtedly the introduction of the USS Enterprise in the opening credits. As the starship soars over the camera, viewers get a thrilling sense of its vast size and power. This scene sets the stage for the entire series, establishing the show's focus on space exploration and adventure. The episode The City on the Edge of Forever, often considered one of the best in the series, features another unforgettable moment. Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock travel back in time to 1930s America, where they meet Edith Keeler, played by Joan Collins. In one poignant scene, Kirk falls in love with Keeler, but knows he must eventually let her go to preserve historical events. Actor William Shatner later recalled feeling particularly emotional during filming, which added to the scene's intensity. Cinematographer Harold E. Wellman used innovative techniques to create the distinctive look of Star Trek. For instance, he employed a handheld or reflex camera to capture more dynamic shots, giving the viewer a greater sense of being present in each scene. This approach was unusual for television at the time and helped distinguish Star Trek from other shows. These iconic scenes have had a lasting impact on audiences, inspiring generations of fans, and contributing to the enduring popularity of the franchise. Many elements of Star Trek, including its diverse cast, thoughtful storytelling, and groundbreaking special effects, continue to resonate today. They can live any place, any time, any situation they wished. It would... Without a doubt, the 1966 TV series Star Trek left an indelible mark on popular culture and sparked conversations surrounding various social and cultural issues. This groundbreaking show presented a future where diversity was celebrated and human potential was limitless, striking a chord with many viewers. The diverse cast, headed by William Shatner as Captain Kirk and Leonard Nimoy as Spock, brought together individuals from different backgrounds. Audiences were introduced to a Russian crew member, an Asian helmsman, and a black female communications officer, all working harmoniously toward a common goal. Such representation broke barriers during a time when racial tensions ran high, contributing to thoughtful dialogues about equality and unity. Moreover, the character of Uhura, played by Nichelle Nichols, became a symbol of progress. She wasn't just another supporting actor, but held a prominent position as a bridge officer communicating with other spaceships. Her role served as inspiration for numerous women including Dr. Mae Jemison, who later became the first African-American woman astronaut. Star Trek also tackled societal dilemmas through allegorical storytelling. For instance, episodes like Let That Be Your Last Battlefield mirrored real-world struggles against racism, while exploring themes of war, peace, and understanding between disparate groups. By presenting these topics subtly within entertaining narratives, the series encouraged viewer introspection and dialogue around challenging subjects. Additionally, Star Trek significantly shaped science fiction as we know it today. Before its advent, sci-fi often focused on isolated explorers encountering strange new worlds. However, Star Trek shifted the narrative towards collective exploration and cooperation among species, a vision echoed in subsequent productions like Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, and Firefly. While Star Trek initially struggled in ratings and faced cancellation after three seasons, its influence persisted thanks to syndication and devoted fanbase known as Trekkies. Over five decades since its debut, its legacy continues to thrive through multiple spin-off shows, films, books, and even merchandise, inspiring generations to explore space, engage with complex ideas, and appreciate our shared humanity. Gentlemen, I have seen what the Klingons do to planets. Upon its release in 1966, the television series Star Trek was met with mixed reviews. Some critics praised the show's innovative concepts and diverse cast, while others criticized it for being too cerebral and intellectual. 
Notably, Jack Gould of the New York Times described the series as a thinking man's outer space adventure. Audiences were also divided, but many found themselves drawn into the futuristic world of the Starship Enterprise and its crew. The show gained a dedicated following, known as Trekkies, who appreciated the optimistic vision of the future presented in Star Trek. They admired the camaraderie among the diverse crew members and celebrated the show's themes of exploration, cooperation, and inclusion. Despite initial uncertainty about its appeal, Star Trek quickly became a cultural phenomenon. Gene Roddenberry's creation went on to receive several award nominations during its original three-season run. Among them were two Emmy Award nominations for Outstanding Dramatic Series in 1967 and 1968. Leonard Nimoy, who played the beloved half-Vulcan character Spock, earned three Emmy nominations for his performance between 1967 and 1969. The significance of these accolades cannot be overstated. For the creators and actors involved, they served as validation for their hard work and dedication to the project. These achievements helped establish Star Trek as more than just another science fiction program. It had become a respected part of the broader TV landscape. Moreover, winning acclaim against other high-profile dramas demonstrated that intelligent storytelling could resonate with audiences and secure industry recognition. These early successes laid the groundwork for the franchise's lasting impact on popular culture. Over five decades since its debut, Star Trek has expanded beyond television, spawning multiple feature films, animated series, merchandising opportunities, and even theme park attractions. Its influence can be seen across various media formats and entertainment industries worldwide. Clearly, the critical reception and awards bestowed upon the original Star Trek series hold immense value, both historically and culturally. During the filming of the iconic Star Trek episode, The Devil in the Dark, the creature known as the Horta proved to be quite a challenge. Initially, the prop department created a heavy, uncomfortable suit for the actress inside. But when she couldn't move freely, they sought help from a more unexpected source, a plasterer named Hua Chang. He crafted a lightweight costume from foam rubber, which allowed for greater flexibility. This change led to one of the most memorable scenes where the Horta crawls on the walls and ceiling, leaving the viewers truly amazed. Another fascinating story comes from the season 2 premiere, Amok Time. Leonard Nimoy, who played Spock, had difficulty performing the famous Vulcan salute due to his tight uniform sleeves. To solve this issue, Nimoy suggested slitting the sleeves up to his wrists, giving him enough room to bend his fingers correctly. Despite initial resistance from the wardrobe department, he eventually got permission, leading to the authentic Vulcan salute we all know today. Furthermore, while shooting the pilot episode, where no man has gone before, the original Starship Enterprise model was still under construction. So, the producers used a hastily built wooden ship standing just six feet tall. Later, when ILM took over special effects, they constructed the 20-foot long, highly detailed version that graced our screens throughout the series. You're safe now. Is this your brother, Jim? Without a doubt, Star Trek left a significant mark on television and film history when it first aired in 1966. This groundbreaking series presented a hopeful vision of the future, where diverse cultures came together in peaceful exploration. Its innovative storytelling paved the way for modern science fiction. The original show's unique take on space travel and alien encounters captivated audiences, eventually inspiring a franchise that includes multiple spin-off TV series, films, and a vast range of merchandise. One cannot understate the importance of Star Trek in shaping the genre and pushing technological boundaries. In terms of filmmaking, Star Trek broke new ground by employing then cutting-edge special effects techniques. For instance, the famous Starfield visual effect was created using slit-scan photography, a method rarely seen before. These pioneering efforts influenced many later productions, demonstrating how even seemingly minor innovations can significantly impact the industry. Moreover, Star Trek served as a springboard for numerous successful careers both in front of and behind the camera. Actors like William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, and George Techey became household names, while others involved in the production moved on to prominent roles elsewhere in Hollywood. Additionally, countless writers, directors, and producers credit Star Trek as their inspiration for entering the entertainment business. As far as cinematic adaptations go, the first Star Trek movie debuted in 1979, nine years after the initial run of the series had ended. 
Since then, 10 more feature films have been released, with another one currently in development. Each installment has contributed to maintaining the franchise's relevance and popularity over the decades. Among these films, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan stands out as particularly influential. Directed by Nicholas Meyer, this entry is often regarded as the best of the bunch due to its thrilling narrative, strong character development, and thematic depth. Many fans consider it the gold standard against which all other Star Trek movies are measured. Another notable aspect of the Star Trek phenomenon lies in its ability to inspire generations of creatives across various mediums. From literature to video games, the franchise's rich universe provides ample material for artists and designers to draw upon. Furthermore, real-world scientific advancements can trace their origins back to concepts initially introduced through Star Trek. All things considered, it is evident that Star Trek, which premiered in 1966, continues to hold sway over popular culture and creative expression. With each passing decade, new audiences discover the joy of exploring strange new worlds, seeking out new life and civilizations, and boldly going where no one has gone before. And so, the legacy of Star Trek lives on, resonating deeply within the annals of film history. Once they will be posted, violation of the smallest of them. Without a doubt, the original Star Trek series from 1966 holds a special place in many people's hearts. Did you know that Gene Roddenberry, its creator, was a former pilot who drew inspiration for the show from his love of science fiction? This groundbreaking series broke barriers by featuring one of television's first ethnically diverse casts and tackling social issues of the time through engaging stories set in space. The show has left an indelible mark on popular culture and even inspired real scientific advancements. Many astronauts, engineers, and scientists have cited Star Trek as a significant influence on their career choices. But what about you? How did this iconic series affect your life? Were you captivated by Captain Kirk's courage or Spock's logical thinking? Or perhaps Uhura's trailblazing role as a woman of color in a position of authority resonated with you? Whatever it may be, we would love to hear your personal stories and reflections on the lasting impression that Star Trek made on you. If you feel so inclined, please share your favorite episode, character, or memory in the comments below. Let us know if Star Trek played a part in shaping your interests, values, or career path. Your insights might inspire others. Don't forget to like and share this post to keep the conversation going. And while you're here, why not consider subscribing to our channel for more exciting discussions on classic TV shows that continue to touch lives today. So go ahead, take a moment to reminisce and engage. Let's celebrate the power of storytelling together.